Hello everyone, this hour on Verbling, the next in my great short stories series, we're going to be doing two tasks uh, if, we, if we balance our time correctly, which is we're going to be reading a second short story, a very short story, and we'll be discussing the first one by Herbert Gold. I thought it would be interesting to try to look at both because one of them was written very recently and I think it, in a strange way it would be a good follow-up to the first story that we read particularly because the first story has a lot to do with uh, death <laughs> so he seems to be having a kind of midlife crisis in the story that we read but in the second one which was written very recently he is now the same age as the people he's talking about in the story, so it might be interesting if we can compare the two, and it's quite short. Okay, that's a little bit about the class today. Here's a bit about me. I'm John Eric, your Verbling teacher for this hour. I'm an American teacher from New York, hanging out in Lisbon, Portugal, to bring you this class. By the way, three quick rules to help you participate. Don't forget to turn off, tune in, and open up. That means, what does that mean? What does that mean, Daniel? Sorry, sorry? I'm tired of reading my introduction. I want you to do it. <laughs> you're supposed to say, that means turn off your microphone when you're not speaking so we can keep the classroom quiet. And then Sylvia says, and rule number two is tune in to the new words to activate what you learn so I can give you feedback and corrections. And then Yuki comes in and says, rule three is open up to your classmates, relax and have fun. See? It could be, yeah. I should get all of you to do it. I'm getting too yeah. tired. Where is Yuki anyway? He'll be here. He'll be here. Okay, listen. What I'm going to do right now is, where's my Herbert Gold story? Did I erase it? Oh my god, I think I erased it. I have to download it again. Give me a second. I'm going to reopen this right now. One second. Okay. On the screen right now, you should be able to see Herbert Gold. Do you see him? Yes. Yes, I'm not man. Good looking guy, huh? He was he was once criticized for looking too much like a like a movie like a Hollywood movie star, like he couldn't possibly be a good writer because he's just looks too much like Dennis Hopper or something like that. Uh, do you know where he is, by the way? Uh, the writer or Dennis Hopper? Dennis Hopper's dead. Do you know where Herbert Gold is in that picture? Uh, no. Ah, uh, the city. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm, Do you recognize the landscape? Yes, uh, yes uh, San Francisco. Very good. How do you know? Because of the skyscraper. <laughs> because of the background on the right. That's right. Sylvia, say the word skyscraper for me. Skyscraper. Very good. Yesterday, you, you were less sure about how to say that word. Yeah. Today, you got it. Yeah, it's, it's that famous, iconic building of, of San Francisco in the background. Um, I can, I've been there, and I completely forgot the name of it. Um, I don't remember. Anyway, you can Google for it. So that's a picture of him from the 80s. I think the late 80s, early 90s. There's a reason why I have that picture. Because in this very short story which is so short it'll probably take us about 20 minutes to read or less he wrote the story around this time I thought it would be a good idea because because first I always want to give you something new in the class and, uh, but also because in Death in Miami Beach the people that he's talking about like the doctor and the, and the people in the um, Remember the people in the old folks' home that's uh, got the loud music piping through it and the flashy lights? They're all old, and they've all gone to Miami Beach to basically die. <laughs> it's kind of depressing. But when he wrote this story, um, he was, you know, 30 years 
older than he was when he wrote Death in Miami Beach. I think 20 or 30 years later. I thought it might be interesting to read a story that he had written. So let's give it a try. And we'll still have time to discuss Death in Miami Beach as well. But it might be interesting to compare the two. So I just found this this morning really early. Uh, let's go. So this is 24.2, the second story here. Let's go to slide four, page four. And there's only six pages, so this would be one, two, yeah. So it's about it's about two normal pages long. This is from a, a magazine in San Francisco. All right. Let me just get this on screen so you can read it. There we go. So we're going to read a short story that Herbert Gold wrote. Uh, I don't really know if he wrote this. He published it when he was in his mid-80s, so something like 85 or 86. I don't know if he actually wrote it in 2012 because it's set in the past, so I'm not exactly sure when he wrote it. But he published it recently. So nonetheless, I thought it would be a good idea because now Herbert Gold is writing at the same age as many of the characters in Death in Miami Beach. It might be interesting to see how his outlook has changed. Okay, And that will give us a chance to talk about this and compare it to Death in Miami Beach for those of you who read it. So as we know, Carmen's our traditional story beginner, and she's not here. In her absence, I'm going to call on Yuki, our super student. Thank you for nominating. Are, are you here? <laughs> Can you hear me? You are, you are nominated. <laughs> no, but I, I'm not a super student. Well, you're I'm still old nominated. Old, 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 ordinary old man. OK. Um, Melinda, doing her best. I think he, she do, she's a bad person, said my friend, Fred Hinn. Hirsch. Uh-oh, we lost him. <laughs> the gods of Google kicked him out. Uh-oh, he'll be back. Let's give him a second. Verbling chat seems to be fixed, fine. Where are you, Yuki? Uh-oh. He he went to to take his prize. He went to the Oscar. Okay. Well, Daniel, <laughs> <laughs> in Yuki's absence. Okay. I think she's a bad person," said my friend Fred Hirsch. 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 His face creased into lines of grief, failure to sleep. Defeat. So that that's a list of three things. His face is creased into three things: grief, failure to sleep, and defeat. Just I'm so that's sorry, clear. I'm kicked out. Oh, you're back. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Daniel, you've just been fired. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. You've been okay. fired. I'm terribly sorry, Daniel. You'll go next. Okay. I Let's let's start again. Yuki, did you get your prize? Did you leave to get the prize money for being nominated? Just say yes, Yuki. Uh, yes. <laughs> good, 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 good. Very good. Okay, let's start again. The person under discussion, Melinda Hopkins, seems to like to like a fairly standard California and Stafford Stafford beauty. Except for the shy way she had had not 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 meeting the, the shy, eyes. Listen, the shy way she had of going for the shy way she had of no no meeting her her eyes the, the eyes yeah. when <laughs> the eyes when you looked at her the population tended to look at her for fla flowing here. Flaxen hair, flaxen, flaxen hair with almost no wave in it. Tennis shorts on 
campus or for more formal occasions, white tennis dresses, an unusual smoldering thing going on in those eyes that did not, did not meet, meet mine and according to a stick, sticking girl uh oh gala gala garrulous 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 Fred did not meet his either as he roomed about her or was screamed and beneath her he said she she had a talent for computers, was working on advanced programs for import-export purposes. Even when she made love, or a kind of love, looking into the eyes of others, it was a distraction from her in interior life. But bad person, Fred repeated. By the way, we missed a line earlier. So just to make sure it's clear, look again at the first paragraph, the first line. I think she's a bad person, said my friend Fred Hirsch. His face creased in the lines of grief, failure to sleep, defeat. A graduate student with a decent job coming up. He was too, he was too early for those etchings and purplish bruises. So just because uh, I think we might have missed that description. So... How old is Fred Hirsch, by the way? I think he's quite young. Because? Uh, because uh, he is uh, uh, j he just graduated university. He did, wait, wait, wait. He didn't no. just graduate university. He's a graduate student. Uh, so he, he's, a, he's a student of a university. Not a student of a university. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. A graduate student. What are you upper, studying? Upper class of a student. Of like 18. what? No, 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 no. Much older. Much older. 16. He's. He, he, no, no, no. Much older. Much older. He's probably uh, thirty. Around around the thirties. Yes. Yeah, yeah, thirty. Because he's he's probably doing a master's or a PhD. Because in American English, when we say graduate student, it means you have a bachelor's degree, which is three to four, maybe even five years. So he, he continues studies after graduation from university. Right. So he he could be anywhere between roughly twenty five to thirty. He might even be older. I'm a graduate student. <laughs> I'm older than that. <laughs> so graduate students are just failures. Like me. Failures in life. I have to go back to school. No, John Eric, you're not a failure. Okay, thank you, class. <laughs> so, no, I'm just kidding. So, but the but the point is that he could be he could be he's not a he's not an he's not doing his bachelor's degree, uh, and those etchings, that's a little bit confusing. What are the etchings here? That's another way to say something we said earlier in that line. What what are the etchings? Etching is a process of. Uh, mm, Metal, uh, metal drawing. Plate, yeah. You're drawing on a plate, right? Drawing. Yes, when drawing. But, a, but here, plate. but here, what's the etching in this sentence? This is just a, uh, maybe just a, uh, impression, no? Well, we got to be. There's a specific word that it refers to. Can anyone see? Etchings is another way to say an earlier word. The word is creased into lines. Etching in lines is the same. What are the lines that we're talking about with Fred Hirsch? Does he, is he, does he draw for a living? Does he create etchings? Um, he's, he's, not a, he's not an architect. Rotting, no? <laughs> what? Ro rotted, no? Rotting? He's not no. dead. <laughs> no. He's not dead, Yuki, no. no. You mean Fred Hirsch is, is, a, is a corpse? No. No. <laughs> no. No. He's because got yeah, it's bruises. Bruises, but that's 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 Herbert Gold being descriptive. What he means is that he looks prematurely old. There's lines in his face. 
the like as if they were etched there. He's got wrinkles. Mm -hmm. Is that clear, everyone? Yes, clear. Daniel, clear? More or less. <laughs> okay, if it's not clear, let's make it clear. The first line creased into lines. That means around his eyes and around his mouth, he has age wrinkles, those lines. Is that clear? Daniel? Mm, I am a little lost. Okay. Let's go here. Let's look at me. See me? Yes. See this? Yes. What's that? The, the forehead. No, this line here. See it? Ah, yes, yes. I'm, I look prematurely old. See? That's a line. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so in the story, in that line, he says, Fred Hirsch, his face creased into lines. If I crease, look what happens. I'm creasing my forehead. See? Uh huh. It's creasing into three lines. Okay, but uh -huh. the guy, so the guy's the guy's face was already creased into lines, and then later in that sentence, Herbert Gold, writing his description, says he was too early for those etchings, meaning that the lines were so deep, they looked like that they were etched. Etched is like when you take a some kind of instrument, like uh, I don't know, I don't have anything here. I don't know. Well, I don't have a, I don't have a knife here. Yeah, I do. Here, here we go. <laughs> Imagine I take a little knife and I carve the line into my face. I would be etching it. So, in other words, it means he looks prematurely old. So, I just want to point that out because it's a great example of how he's using language. He won't say, Fred Hirsch looked old. He will say, he was too early for those etchings, meaning the, the wrinkles in his face. So it's a good example. Throughout the story, and in Death in Miami Beach, he makes a lot of, he makes a lot of um, leaps. He, he jumps forward and uses descriptive language. And you have to see what he's trying to say. It's not that obvious. Okay? Is that more or less clear? Yes. Sylvia, Shadow, is that more or less clear? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So I'm spending time on that so that in the rest of the story, you can look for that pattern of him describing without being obvious, saying one thing when he means another. Uh, okay? Just to take a kind of shortcut to give. Okay. So Melinda, Melinda, she's a California girl, and she's attractive because she has a way of not looking at you. This is what, what the guy is describing. Um, so Daniel, let's pick it up. By the way, garrulous. I gave you a definition. Too, yes. Right. Talkative. Talkative. Right. Right. There we go. Okay. So Daniel, let's pick it up. Maybe you can take it sort of to the bottom of the page there. Okay. She did harm to you, maybe, I said, a true body. But that's because you choose to fall. Let yourself get done, get done too. But, hey, come off it. Let's just say what kind of person she is has yet to be determined. 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 Good. Yes. Just as far as you're concerned, it was a bad deal, okay? So what happened between Fred and Melinda? What do you think? Let's just take a quick moment here. Fred keeps saying bad, bad person. Well, what is it? What happened? What do you imagine happened? By the way, I'm talking to the whole class, so give me your ideas quick. We don't know for sure. We haven't read the story, but what do you think? Their relationship was broken. Probably, yeah. Mm. I think so too. It seems like they broke up and Fred got the short end of the stick. You know the expression when someone when you have to volunteer and everyone takes a stick, a match, one of them is broken in half, whoever gets the short one has to do the thing they don't want to do. Fred got the short end of the stick, it sounds like. She sounds like she broke up with him. Sounds that way. I could be wrong. 
<laughs> Teacher, uh, she broke uh, Fred. I mean, who's talking about that bad person? Fred is talking about Melinda. We haven't we haven't met Melinda, but we ha we have a description. She has flaxen hair, mm -hmm. right? So she's got she's got like a California blonde. Uh, uh, what else? An unusual smoldering thing going on in those eyes. He talks a lot about her eyes. Uh, and according to the stricken garrulous Fred, stricken is like when you get sick, you're stricken with a disease to strike strike stricken so it sounds like Fred is madly in love with her he's stricken like you know kind of like when you're young so you're you're you fall in love very easily and he's garrulous means he means he talks a lot so he's so, talking with himself I mean in this uh, Fred yeah. Fred no he's talking to the narrator whoever the we don't know who the narrator is Fred okay. is talking to the narrator and they're talking about Melinda, and as Yuki said, it seems like Melinda broke up with Fred. Kind of a strange story for uh, an 86-year-old to write, but <laughs> let's see where it's going. <laughs> anyway, we'll see if there's any point of comparison between the two. Okay, sorry to interrupt, Daniel. I just wanted to clarify what was meant by bad. Uh, closing out my body that is for the spring quarter duties duties closing out my body duties for the spring quarter Melinda graduating, graduating on one of the those glorious June days kissed her there once goodbye kissing Fred and then turning to me with the same lightning brush brush against the mouth. Her father lived in Belgium. Sometimes she saw him during the summers. Her mother was an actress in New York. It wasn't conven convenient for her parents to show up for graduation ceremony. They've been there, done that, she explained. Anyway, man is an ingenue. Working at it in New York, still the ingenue. She was smiling more than just at one corner of her mouth. Enough smile to assure Fred and me that she showed the humor in her mother's career. But she's not 40 yet. Well, maybe. So why shouldn't, they, shouldn't she play 22 years old? Why should they twenty-two year olds? Why so why shouldn't they play twenty-two year olds? So who's she talking about here? Who who's playing twenty-two year olds? Is that clear? Melinda Mothers? Melinda's Melinda's mother, mother right. Yeah. Okay. So she's forty. <laughs> she's forty, but she's try she's still trying to get a career as an actress out in New York. So we're getting a little bit of background about her. Um, so Shadow, why don't you continue? Okay. Let's, let's see if we take it, maybe this part here. I asked Melinda if she was interested in acting or modeling, and she said they were fifth and sixth on her list of interests. After she branching in Australia, running garage sales, knitting multicolored skull cup caps for Hasidim Hasidim and, uh, Hasidim you know and, the old uh, the old the old orthodox Jews remember these people are all from New York so these are the Jews in the old neighborhood that dress in black uh, <laughs> Amish people no no the old the orthodox Jews they look like Amish people but they're they're not okay. the, the orthodox ones that have to wear suits even when it's a hundred degrees outside. I used to live in the in the Hasidic neighborhood, the Hasidim. I used to live in the neighborhood in Brooklyn. Okay. Uh, uh, and her serious talent writing computer programs, but that's lonely sometimes, she said. So maybe I should get into the 
ingenue business like mom. So was she interested in being an actress? Not, not, but N not at all. Yeah. <laughs> She'd rather be sheep ranching in Australia or running garage sales. So in other words, she's not interested. What does she do? What's her job? She's interested in acting or modeling, but I don't know. If she's not interested in acting. She's interested. She's a computer programmer. Ah, uh, she was. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So she's. Uh, so she yeah. sets herself apart from her mother. Mm -hmm. So we have this. We have this girl, this young woman, but we don't really meet her. We're just getting sort of a picture uh, through their conversation, and I think the narrator remembering him, remembering her. Okay, keep going, Shadow. Clever Melinda seems to have some humor, of at least irony. Sad young people often develop this as a useful device. I'd like if it. Uh, sorry, I would like it if. Uh, if you. If yeah, if you stayed in Palo Alto with me, Fred said, ever the hopeless nerd. We could get married. It was a question. He wanted me as a witness. <laughs> Fred, Fred sounds like he needs some better women skills. <laughs> we could get married, and it's a question. I mean, would you be convinced <laughs> if someone asked you like that? We, Not sure. <laughs> we, we, we could get married? <laughs> well, like, like, why don't you... Say it a little bit more definitively. Sorry, anyway. Okay, keep going, Shadow. She wouldn't tell him where he, where his idea could be found on her list of career alternatives. But she puffed out her uh, cheeks in a thorough up gesture. She didn't like... <laughs> sorry, sorry, through up gesture. Yeah, I understand it now. <laughs> okay. So didn't like it when Fred talked dirty to her, and so, as, and as to ten tenure, tenure, tenure with an untenured professor, hadn't been there. Didn't want to do that. What's the meaning of untenured teacher? A tenured teacher means that you are. You're part of the university because you've been there for a long time. So you're ten tenured, meaning you are permanent. So that means that you have enough experience that they hire you as a full professor. So she's making this kind of the narrator is making this kind of joke. And as to tenure with an untenured professor, hadn't been there, didn't do that earlier. Been there, done that. Talking about her mother. She, he, he uses that expression again, but this time talking about her feelings about Fred. So the more important thing is this. Does she want to get married? Yes or no? No. No. When he brings it up, how does she react? Throw she up, just her. She <laughs> pretends to throw up. <laughs> yeah, but he, he said she didn't like it when Fred talked dirty to her. He didn't talk to her dirty. I don't know if if he means if the narrator means asking to get married is talking dirty, or if he really means talking dirty. I'm not quite sure. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure because I I kind of thought he was talking about like saying these things that she doesn't like is quote unquote talking dirty. Anyway, she didn't. It's very clear that she wants to be unattached. Sounds that way, at least. So, Sylvia, why don't you take the next part? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm sure Stanford is a fine school with an excellent reputation, she said. And I love the architecture, too. All this beige building, that time in the computer lab, those rich kids with their fathers living in Belgium or someplace. Folks like Fred and many other young men tend to judge people by what they do, inadvertently or Advertently. Yeah, wait, wait. And what? Wait, wait, wait. Inadvertently. Say it a little slower. Inadvertently. Inadvertently. Uh, inadvertently. There you go. Or advertently. Uh, 
It's a bit difficult. You, you Advantage. Gotta say, ver vertent. 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 That's vertent. it. Advertent. Advertently. There you go. And what they look like and how they happen to lock into the guy's dreams. Fred made a mistake to set his sight on his high. AQ. I, IQ. I think IQ. Campus. Ah. Campus. Bell with the programming talent. He was too much for him. Her witness searching the ways something more than Fred. Personally, of course, well warned and prudent, all I want to do was falling her to the hands of the earth. So, what's a campus bell? What's a bell? It was, was, it was spelled like that. B-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Is that uh, clear? No. Like, I know the IQ is the number for smart people. Right. Well, anyway. for anyone. <laughs> yeah. Oh. If it's high, you're smart, supposedly. Although, it's been discredited, so we don't really use it anymore. Bell... Spelled like that means the same as ciao bello, ciao bella. Yeah. It means beauty. Yeah. So Fred made a mistake to set his sights on this campus beauty. He's talking about Melinda. He made a mistake. To set his sights is to get you to get it into your head that your that to, to like like to like to look through like to look through the sight of a gun, right? To put something as to make something a target to set your sights, get your sights, set your sights on. So that's that's just an expression that means um, that you've got this goal. So he made a mistake because she's got a high IQ. She's the campus beauty, campus of the university, with a programming talent. She was too much for him. Mm -hmm. All right, just to make sure that's clear. Uh, Okay. And here, sorry, and just a question. How does the narrator feel about the two of them? Because we get the word I for the first time in this paragraph. For the first time, we have the first person. It seems like uh, another student and right. a professor that he was in the campus before. Okay, and what do you think? What do you think is going to happen between the three of them? <laughs> I don't know because I just found the story uh, by accident, so uh, I, I don't know all the details. I just skimmed through it, so I don't really know what's going to happen. But what do you think is going to happen between Fred, Melinda, and I, whoever I is? Um, maybe the narrator is falling in love with uh, Melinda, and so Melinda chooses the other guys. Could be. Maybe. Sounds like we've got the recipe for a love triangle in literature. The famous love triangle. All right. So keep going. Um, Sylvia, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Uh, okay, thanks. He said when Fred and she stopped seeing each other, and they was no longer on campus either, I lost track of Melinda. She ducked. She disappeared off my screen, but I made she was still on her home. But I and imagined. But I imagined she was good. still on her phone. And then I heard she was in prison. Oh well, it shouldn't uh -oh. make a difference. But I especially dislike the idea of somebody like her doing time. The church was smuggling cocaine in her luggage on a flight from Ecuador. What did she think that the dogs and the narcs couldn't meet her? His and therefore couldn't spend all their time trying to get Melinda to look at them. What they could spend their strength sniffing at her and not notice that she was a mule? That a flight from Ecuador was safe because it wasn't a flight from Colombia? So, was this a story about a love triangle? No, about no. cocaine. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <clears throat> all I wanted to do was follow her to the ends of the earth. And then, when they end their college careers, I guess they go off. The last thing he hears, that, hears is that she's in prison. Um, by the way, um, here's an expression. I just like the idea of someone like her doing time. 
Do you know that expression, everyone? Doing time. No. It means spending time. It means being in jail. Doing time <laughs> means spending time in jail. In because summer. you're... Yeah, because you're given a sentence, a sentence of time. So if you're doing your sentence, you're carrying it out, you're in jail. So that always means in jail, doing time. And we've got this, and what, what's a narc down here? The people who find for uh, drugs. Right, narcotics agent, and we abbreviate it to narc, narcotics agent. The police, for the drug police are narcotics agents or narcs. Usually a narc is someone who goes undercover so that you don't know that they're a police officer. So you have the expression, don't be a narc, you know, don't sell me out to someone else because usually they're undercover and they try to get you to buy drugs and then they arrest you so a narc is usually undercover uh, what else so I like this part here where he says she what did she think that the dogs and the narcs couldn't meet her eyes remember she was this beautiful girl and part of what made her attractive to the narrator was that she didn't really make eye contact with people. She'd kind of look away shyly. <laughs> so the idea is that she had this, she, did she think she had the same effect on drug, drug dogs and narcotics agents? Because how did she end up in jail? So it's kind of the story of a tragedy. Well, Yuki, let's find out what happens to her Do, time in jail. Sure, can, can I ask a question? It's the, the sentence that said uh, she's she wasn't a mark. Right. What's the meaning of? Um, she wasn't a what? I can't see it. Um, where is it? I I can't see it. I put it back. Yeah, yeah. I, the last uh, the last line, and not noticing that she was a mule. A mule. A mule. What's the meaning of? A mule. You know what a donkey is, right? Yeah. A mule is the same as a donkey. Hee-haw, right? Hee -haw, yeah, but hee -haw. He, he, how are they noticing that she's a monkey? Not a monkey, a donkey. <laughs> a donkey? Oh, my God. Oh, the, I, I didn't get it. I mean, it's... The horse with the big ears is yeah. a donkey. Yeah. But here's the thing. What do donkeys do? What do we use mules for? What do we use them for? Before there were cars, what did we use the mule for? Ride. Or ride or to transport stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So, in this context, she's a drug mule. That means that she's transporting drugs. Oh, okay. Yeah, I get it. So, right? And the very last so sentence. Maybe, yeah, maybe she's swallowing it to get it through. That could be, right? Well, it says, no, no, but here it says she's smuggling cocaine in her luggage. So she's not even thinking because how are they, how are they not going to find it, right? Um, the last sentence, her karma was, was that of a winner, not a loser. Karma. What's karma? I think Japanese word, karma. Is it Japanese, Yuki? <laughs> I don't know. I think they... Uh, yes, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a John Lennon word. Instant karma is going to get you. I think karma is originally uh, from India because it is closely uh, connected to the philosophy of Buddhism. Buddhism. Yes. So, karma means... Luck, you know, kind, of, mean, kind of like luck, right? Uh, yes, it, uh, it's a thing. Uh, it's an uh, agony uh, given, given to every human. Uh, and we, uh, we have to try our best to get the indictment uh, to, to avoid uh, karma. That's that, uh, the that, uh, teaching of uh, Buddhism. So, to try to learn from your experience, right? Something like that. Um, so, 
he's asking this question, karma, was that a, of a winner? Her karma was that of a winner, not a loser. He doesn't really expect to find her in this situation. All right, Yuki, let's take it up on the second and last page here. Okay. Her Colombian boyfriend had given her such guarantee just to carry this Melinda. Melinda. He's got an accent. <laughs> Melinda. Yeah. Just, just carry this. Just carry this Melinda. Just carry this Melin Melinda. And you get 20,000 nice ones and I get whatever the market turns out to be. I also am taking a chance, my sweet. Or he, of course, took another, another flight. The market had, had firm, so in general, he won. Coke sales are more reliable than other, other forms of retail. Not Coca-Cola, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, the tipster with problems of his own gave her up. So in spe specific Miranda dose. Right. A tipster. What do you think a tipster is? Tipster is a person who, who gives very um, information. Right. Uh, right. A whistleblower. Yes. Right. Gambling. So, or gambling. Or uh, speculation, maybe. Yes, right, right. Mm -hmm. So in this case, the information was to the police. That girl's got drugs. So someone who is trying to get his sentence reduced in prison or trying to get his name cleared or whatever he was trying to get or trying to get money sold her out. That's, that's the tipster. Is that clear, everyone? Someone who gives a tip is a tipster. Clear, everyone? Yeah? Yes. Yes. We're cool? All right. Keep going, Yuki. The friend who, who called her Melinda decided to head to some place where there was, there was no extradition treaty, extradition treaty with the U.S. to avoid the, all the time-consuming legal hassles. As Melinda, as Melinda, sorry about that. Sheet happens. <laughs> sheet happens. Because he can't speak English right, so he says sheet. Get the ah. joke? Because <laughs> he's got an accent, so he says sheet instead, I see. Of, instead of the other in word. The in, in, other <laughs> words, in other words, this guy put her on a separate plane, she got arrested, and he's somewhere where they can't extradite him. He's somewhere safe getting all that money from the drug sales and she took all the risk but you know that's life sheet happens <laughs> that's life uh, okay Daniel keep going Fred had given me the news and a few years later told me she was getting out maybe hadn't been raped by the maternal maternal light to Ma drive. Matronly. Matronly. Matronly, good. The matronly truck driver population of her federal prison. And now, what should he do? Surround her with caring, pay for therapy, who woo, woo her with his kindness. Woo. woo. You know, woo. like, it means when you're, when, you're, when you're trying to get a girlfriend, you woo her. So oh. it's sort of like flirting. Uh, mm -hmm. It also means attracting. Okay. So woo her with his kindness. Woo her with his kindness into a new life program that might also include it, Fred. Stay away, I said. Can't, he said, wailing. Then why are you asking me? <laughs> <laughs> That's, a very, that's a very good question. Shadow, you're going to finish it up for us. Mm, she's gone. Shadow's gone? Why, why, why'd you leave, Shadow? Shadow, I didn't tell you to leave. Sylvia, you're going to finish it up for us. Yeah. Uh, as it turned out, it was I who had the chance to avoid contact with this bad luck Melinda. 
formerly at of Stanford University. She called from San Francisco, where I live, and said, Beach, here, man. Yes, I will take her to dinner. Probably, I also want to see what 22 months in a federal prison looks like on his fresh face, shy head, young computer programmer. Beached here. Do you know what that means? Beached. Um, Horse. Say again, Wars. Daniel. Horse. Well, we have an expression. If there's a, for example, a whale was beached in California. Is the whale in the water? No. Where's the whale? On the. You know what a whale is? Like yeah. Moby Dick. Yeah. Okay. So if the whale was beached, is it in the ocean? No. Where is it? Mm. It's on the beach. Clear? Mm. No. Remember Moby Dick? Yeah. yeah, Moby Dick, yes. Okay. We have an expression in English. Ah. If the whale is beached, it's not in the water anymore. Ah. Uh, right? Okay. okay, okay. So, if it's not on the water, it can't swim. If it can't swim, it's going to die, probably. Mm -hmm. So, if a person is beached, it means a person is stranded and stuck in a bad place. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Belinda got out of prison, and it sounds like she called the narrator. It sounds like she called him. Hey, man, beached here. Mm -hmm. So, after all of that, she calls him, and what's his reaction? What's the narrator's reaction to the phone call? I suppose he 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 showed the compassion to her. Maybe compassion? Really? No. I, I wanted I wanted no. to see what twenty two months looks like on her fresh face. It doesn't sound like compassion to me. <laughs> That's why I'm asking. <clears throat> It's 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 not where I would expect the story to end. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yes, I would take her out to dinner. Probably I also wanted to see what 22 months in a federal prison looked like on this fresh-faced, shy-eyed, young computer programmer. Probably. So, it's a kind of a weird conversation. It's not what we expect. So we started off thinking this was a love triangle, and beautiful Melinda. <clears throat> Remember Melinda from the Bob Dylan song? Sweet Melinda, the peasants call her the goddess of gloom. Do you, do you know your Bob Dylan, everyone? No. Yeah. No? Oh, you've got to go. You've got to go listen to your Bob Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet Melinda was the goddess of gloom, the one that made everyone everyone went to when they were unhappy. So. Um, it starts off like this almost cliched relationship story, and in less than two pages, it goes to being an epic novel <laughs> where suddenly it's this story of a tragedy. But it, but it ends in a strange way. Probably I wanted to see what her face looked like. Well, he's not sure? Why is he not sure? Why does he say probably? That's my question for you. He, now he have a great interest in 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 his her life in in living uh, she had lived in 22 months in in prison uh, such a beautiful girl like Marinda but at the same time she, she uh, after don't want to know the fact it is it, what for, fact, for him uh, fact of life fact of um, wait wait who who doesn't know what unfortunate the, person. who doesn't uh, want to know what the narrator doesn't want to know I, something? I mean the narrator and what exactly doesn't he want to know I didn't quite understand he doesn't uh, want to know what happened to her he he doesn't want to know uh, that uh, a beautiful dream beautiful um, expectation uh, 
might be destroyed uh, easily ah, just so that, by that, mistaking sometimes. So that's why he says probably. Is that is that yes, what you mean? I ah, think so. I have a different reading. Mm -hmm. I have a different reading. My reading is that. He, he, by the way, this is just my guess. I I don't know this at all. I have a feeling this is. If I had to guess, right? Tell me if you agree. I think this is the narrator. The narrator is is, is completely fictional, but I can imagine. Herbert Gold sitting in a cafe in San Francisco overhearing a conversation <laughs> and he starts to imagine what's going on in the conversation and he gets curious about it and he starts to write it because everything he writes it, it seems to be less like a story and more like a, an essay so I get the feeling that this is someone um, seeing a kind of pattern about the young people around him because he's older and he sees this kind of pattern he tries to capture it in a story so what I think he's noticing by the way I could be totally wrong about this maybe it's completely invented but I get the feeling that that word probably is really important you've got the narrator he overhears one guy consoling another about his girlfriend or about his you know the girl that he was interested in meeting this terrible end and he's trying to advise the other guy to stay away from her but he himself the narrator not Herbert Gold he himself isn't going to stay away from her and he he recognizes that his motives are not pure <laughs> that's what I think probably means in other words he's telling his friend to stay away from her his friend says he can't and he recognizes that probably he's curious to see what she looks like, what prison did to her. Or maybe there's another reason that he's not willing to admit to himself, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe he has a more ulterior motive. Maybe this is his chance. Now that she's totally desperate, he has his chance with this girl that he was obsessed with as much as the other guy. That's why I wanted to say. I she, ah? oh. After, I don't want to see the reality current reality of Marenda to Marenda of the now situation. And the reality is that she's going to be messed up because yes. of prison. Yes. Could be. Could be. Could be. Well what do you think this story has to do with is there any similarity between this and Death in Miami Beach? I I've I think uh, the after of this, these stories, uh, have our goals, uh, uh, have right, have have written the uh, mm, uh, uh, focused on the problem of Americans' life. He had written a uh, concrete uh, situation and uh, lives of American people. Uh, intending to describe the what is the real life, what is the desperation, what is the insulation, and what is the death. So here, what, what is isolation? Mm -hmm. Isolation, sorry. Right. Uh, so I think uh, uh, I, I I have learned that uh, the first story is from the uh, collection of how his work. Uh, Harvard Gold Work. He, its name is uh, the Age of Happy Problems. Right, right. Yes, it it is uh, Harvard Gold Essay Collection. Uh, I think the name of this collection, the Age of Happy Problems, uh, attract his uh, intention of of his work. So uh, here in this story and previous story uh, after uh, try to describe the problems uh, it seems it um, uh, from the from the surface it seems happy problem but uh, in reality it is a serious problem it is closely connected to the death so death and life is the main subject of this after. That is a common threat, this story. 
that's my idea. Do you think that, um, by the way, let me just get some other opinions. I think that's a very interesting point. I forgot about that. I forgot about that book. That's true. He's he, that's one. That's one of the ones that he's more known for. The Age of Happy Problems. Um, do you think this is an expose about American life, Sylvia Daniel? Do you think this has is this uh, an American story? By the way, he lived in other parts of the world, so he kind of he had a lot of experience to draw from. He talks about. American history, but not he, history. He, story, history. Sorry. Not history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> story. 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 There you go. Story. But it could be, it could happen in in another place, in another, in another country. What but about death in Miami Beach? Yeah. Could that happen in another country too? Uh, yes, maybe. In Spain, we have a place similar to Miami, where uh, where all uh, retired people uh, go when. Where is that? In the end of uh, at the end of their life, and where? Where ah uh, <laughs> in Malaga in, in Malaga. <laughs> Okay. Uh, no, no Malaga. Um, Benidor. Benidor. Oh, I don't know that one. Benidor. It's in the in the Mediterranean Sea. Oh, I thought you were going to say Palma Mallorca. <laughs> with with beach. Yes. I thought I thought every, so. Everyone goes out to the island. No, no, in the shore. On the on the okay, okay on, the on the coast. On the coast. On the coast. Yes. Got it. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought it would be interesting. To maybe compare two stories, and I wanted to show you this one because it, a it's short, and b it seems to have been written by him when he's the age of the characters that he's describing in Miami Beach. Some of the characters. So I had a kind of a theory that maybe, like Yuki said, in my version, I have this. I can just sort of picture him sitting and describing what's around him, and but bringing an insight to the situation that the characters are not aware of. And uh, I think you have to read this story as you know more than these characters. There's something that they're talking about that they're not necessarily aware of. Uh, something a little bit deeper, maybe. And we just get a hint of it at the end of the story. So I thought it might be interesting for that reason. Why don't we talk about this on... It's going to have to be on Thursday because I have to start the next class. Yes. Sylvia and Daniel, will you be here on Thursday? Uh, yes, yes. Today that, the day that um, I'm not sure the next week if I will be here. Uh, would you like to discuss both of these stories more in depth on Thursday? Yes, uh, but did you read the other, there is another um, story in Verbling on this lesson. Did you yeah. read it before? We all, yes, we already read it, yes. Okay. It's by the same author. Okay, I will read it. Read it first. It's going to be complicated a little bit. <laughs> yes. All right. So I think gonna... there are many things we, we can discuss about these stories because there are. I have to cut of... you off, Yuki. I have to cut you off. I've got to start the next class or I'm going to get in big trouble. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. Bye for now. Bye for okay. now. Bye. Bye.